Hey everybody and welcome back for some gems and minerals. Today we're looking at something kind of stinky. <laughs> Silver! It's one of my favorites. Yeah. I could not come up with anything more clever and funny than to just grab a book of matches. I think that's probably something we can all relate to. Sulfur, can you believe that? This one came from the Holiday Inn at uh, Rogers, Arkansas. There's a phone number there. I also noticed here, though, on the back, it says uh, advanced reservations by computer. So that's pretty cool. But <laughs> just kidding, guys. Today we are looking at sulfur. Man, incredibly stinky. I did a little bit more research on this just because uh, first whenever we looked at buying pieces of them, but then again for this video and I was just reminded uh, how prolific sulfur is in our lives. So anyway, uh, we have a nice little small sulfur crystal here. And if you look at this thing, it, it, it's actually, it's pretty attractive. Mm -hmm. The sad story of why we have this big crystal right here is because the sulfur samples that we own are very, very fragile. Anyway, that's the small piece. Bring out the big ones. Can do. So I just wanted to uh, read off a couple of these things that I thought was just like, wow, yeah, you don't even think about it until you hear it. It's used it in the vulcanization process of rubber. The whole reason you can use tires. Used as fungicide. It's used in black gunpowder. Most of it, however, is used to make sulfuric acid, which is huge in all kinds of manufacturing. Trust me. I could go on and on and on. There's variations of this that they use to put into natural gas so that you'll smell a rotten egg smell. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm not kidding. Just having these samples out and just having handled them a little bit briefly, I swear it smells like I have had a book of matches wadded up in a sweaty fist for an hour. It's just like unbelievably strong. She should be wearing gloves probably. <laughs> uh, yeah, she probably actually. Boom, she's gonna grab gloves. <laughs> Listen to this. The average human contains 140 grams and takes in about one gram a day, mainly in proteins. Of sulfur? Sulfur, did not know that. Sulfur and sulfate are non-toxic. Mentioned 15 times in the Bible. Was known by the ancient Greeks and burnt as a fumigant. It was mined near Mount Etna in Sicily and used for bleaching cloth and preserving wine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess whenever you run across uh, samples like these, all of a sudden you're going, wow, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yellow color. I've not seen very many other minerals that are this color of yellow. No. So anyway, let us introduce you to the four pieces that we have in our collection. Yes. I also wanted to mention real quick while I'm pulling these out, look inside the case. That is just from being handled a little bit. They are so incredibly fragile. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that a few of these samples are on gypsum. Tell us about this first piece. This is sulfur and calcite. It is three and a half inches long by two inches wide, one and five eighth inches tall. It weighs 136 grams or 4.8 ounces. And so this is the only piece that we own that is on a matrix different than gypsum. All of these other three pieces here are all on gypsum. The label that came with it says, uh, maybe Monroe County, Michigan. Maybe, 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 maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Susan M. Ulrich Fine Minerals. You got to zoom in there and look at that. The calcite and the sulfur crystals, very complementary to one another. It's gorgeous. And this one is also the only UV reactive one. It's calcite. Yep. Man, you want to talk about a pretty blue. Yeah. Just gorgeous. All right, what's our second piece? Uh, the second one is lemon pie. Look at this thing and tell me that does not look like a piece of lemon pie. Uh -huh. Look at that. Look how thick that bed of sulfur crystals is. Up close, it looks really crushed all in that first, I don't know, in that first three quarters inch layer. But then that, that top, it's almost like a sulfur crystal crust on top of this sulfur bed. Lemon pie freaking pie. pie. 
What's the stats on this one? Know. This one is four inches long by two and a half inches wide, uh, one and three quarters high. It is 216 grams or 7.6 ounces. Yeah, and again, just zoom into that and check out how the crust of crystals on top of that is so clear compared to the the custard part. Custard, yes. Yeah. Yeah. What's that third piece called? Clear. This is one of the ones that you can really get lost looking at these crystals. They are just absolutely gorgeous. Looks like rock candy. What's the stats on this one? This one is three and a half inches long by two and a half inches wide, inch and a half tall, uh, 125 grams, 4.4 ounces. Very pretty. And the last piece? Cloudy. Cloudy, that's right. Oh, I didn't realize how tall some of those were. Yeah, this one's just really got some gorgeous little peaks sticking mm -hmm. out of it. This one's got just a little bit more cloudy consistency in the crystals, but man, they're beautiful. Mm. And again, another piece of gypsum here. I'm sure you see each time I pick these up, there's little tiny bits so left cool. over on this pad. Look at that one sticking up right there. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? What's the stats on this one? This one is four inches long by two and three quarters wide by an inch and a half tall, 174 grams, uh, 6.1 ounces. Mm. Yeah, just get in there and look at those. Look at some of those crystals. You just get lost. They just run one into another. Man. Oh, gosh. Oh. Stop. Oh. You know they're going to smell, so don't wow. sniff them. All right, I'll throw these here on the turntable and uh, let you go ahead and spit out some soap facts. So, Will it ever stop? I don't know. Turn out the light and I'll glow. Are, we, are you done? I'm done. Okay. Yep, go ahead. This is part of the orthorhombic crystal system. They form typically in massive or powdery forms, but chunky crystals are also common. It is a two on the most hardness scale. There's where your, your soft comes in. Man, no kidding. Only a few nonmetals occur of nat as native elements, of which there are only two, sulfur and carbon. It is also known as brimstone or burning stone because it burns easily, giving a blue flame when lit. Don't do this though, because it gives off uh, poison gas when it burns. Uh, challenge accepted. No challenge. Uh-huh, no, I no, just no. heard a challenge. Stating a fact. Most of the world's sulfur is mined from beds of limestone and gypsum, such as those under the Gulf of Mexico. It is bright yellow and smells like rotten eggs, one of the easiest minerals to identify. Yeah, that is for sure. I, I did actually mistake a piece of brucite for sulfur once until I got close enough to it, but mm -hmm. that's the only one I've ever, the only time I've ever mistaken a sample of sulfur. All right, well, there's sulfur, guys. We'll go ahead and throw on some close-ups. Let her add these to the cabinet. See you next time. Bye. Oh, oh, oh.